Hello one and all, welcome to Classics on a Shoestring. Today we're going to be working on the daily drive, the Subaru Forester. Don't know if I'm going to get the issue solved or not, but by all accounts it's a common fault with the Subaru Foresters. Driver's door, electric window, plays up. It was working fine up until recently when we had a really heavy downpour of rain and then after that one minute it works without an issue next minute it won't go down or it will go down and then it won't come back up or it will go down juddering and it then won't come up jud unless it's juddering oh it, it's just an absolute nightmare I'm going to show you what it's doing and I've been on a few forums and a few people said to me it's the motor gets moisture in it strip it out clean it re-oil it uh, sorry re-grease it put it back together and it should work even to the point of giving the switch a clean out as well but a lot of people are saying it is the motor that's to fault for some reason where the driver's windows used more than every other window in the car the seals give and it allows water to get in and then it penetrates the motor so we're gonna try and sort that out today let's put the ignition on I'm not going to start it we we'll just do the ignition on now you watch it will probably work fine because it's dry and it's not an issue today but auto down there you go straight down no issues let's see what happens when I put it up I don't know if you can see that but it's struggling and it did have a couple of little judders on its way up yesterday when it was damp uh, you can see the dampness well, probably, you probably can't but there's a load of moisture in on the window and for some reason my window seems to have got scratched so anyway we're gonna pull the panel off which is never done before so that's gonna be entertaining and see about removing the motor stripping it and cleaning it as far as I'm aware there's a Phillips screw there to come out there's a little clip here to come out and it's got a screw in it and then as far as I know the panel just pops off you have to remove the speaker cover I'm not sure how this all comes out and then you sort of pop the panel and lift uh, oh there you go I don't think that's screwed I think that sort of just clipped on oh there you go yeah that's held in by three grommets and that's your tweeter as far as I'm aware you can leave that on there and just jiggle it the panel round it carefully so, right, let's take these screws out that's interesting this doesn't come out it just pops up it's I suppose you don't lose it Obviously someone's had this out before because this one is missing. There's a Phillips screw like I say in there, one in there. Let's pull this off. Again, I'm not 100% sure how this comes off, but I always like to use like the old plastic plastic trim removing tools. And as far as I'm aware, start at the bottom, pop this off as best you can. Bit awkward because there's a rubber seal around the edge of the door. But I find with a plastic trim remover, they don't scratch the door. I have got a metal one, but that's inclined to scratch the door. Hmm. So I've never took these off before. Right. It looks like it's being held. That's all loose. But it's being held here somewhere. And here, so I assume I've got to maybe pop this out, the control panel out, and maybe pop the surround off before the door comes out. Let me have a look and I'll get back. To get this one off, when this is on, it's a bit awkward doing this one handed, there is a little insert just about there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's just a little insert that sits at the bottom here clip that off first and then just gently work your way around it with a trim tool 
because it sits on these little plastic lugs and there's a couple at the bottom so that's how you get that off let's tackle this again I'm just going to go around the edge of it with the plastic tool I can't do it as I'm I can't film it as I'm doing it because I've got nowhere to put the camera so I'll just show you afterwards literally you just go around the edge of this with the trim tool lifting it and it will eventually pop up there's a locating lug here and it there's a metal bar brace in here I don't know if the camera's picking it up that this sits into because obviously that's what you use to close your door so I think that was stopping it so I'm going to disconnect the switch panel yeah literally just pull them two plugs out and see if the panel comes off move these plugs the front one is just so easy it's got a little push tab and it pulls out the back one you have to put a little screwdriver in it to push this tab down and then it falls out and don't do what I've done drop the whole thing on the floor because it literally falls out um, I've got an extra plug on my panel don't know what that does but mine literally just plugs in there and there so I assume that's for the mirrors and windows so that's off now this is looser looser loose so you literally just work it off and there you go it comes away I've also been told you now got to take the speakers out to get up to the panel this has obviously been off before and probably been a problem because this should have this plastic all the way around the door now it's either the window has been a problem in the past or it's literally just where they fitted the new speakers because this has got aftermarket speakers in it I don't know but it's been a part before took my speaker out mine only had two screws in it it's probably meant to have three um, see if that lines up but it looks like it's been drilled in to the door panel to take the larger speakers but the motor mechanism don't know if you can see is through here Inside that way. The motor's up in here, literally just up here somewhere. I don't know about taking the whole mechanism out the door because I really don't know if I want to get that involved and how easy it will be to come out. So I'm going to attempt to take out the three screws that just hold the motor in and drop the motor out itself and that's the bit I want to strip everything else looks like it's lined up straight and clean so I'm going to just attempt to get the three screws out of the motor that's up inside here but that's going to be entertaining they should be Phillips screws as far as I'm aware I can't quite feel what they are but I'll get back to you This is fun and games not. Okay, these 
are the three screws you're trying to get out of the motor casing that sits behind here. What I did was loosen these four mounting bolts that are partly you partly mounting the unit to the car. It gives it a little bit of jiggle. Do not take them all the way out because if you take them all the way out it will swing and the wind comes down. That you don't want to do especially if your arms in here because this this thing here the cog set up that goes to the gearbox will just rip your arms to pieces and you're liable to bend and break something right the fun and game bit as well we'll be trying to get the whole thing back together I've removed the gearbox this sits up behind here like this so the two bottom screws are relatively easy to get to through this big hole this back screw sorry this back screw here you have to get the screwdriver up through here once you get the three screws out this will take a bit of man handling to get out but it does come out but oh my god I don't know if the camera's picking that up that is like brown syrup in there so obviously it's been getting a lot of moisture in there and it is absolutely soaking wet so I'm going to pull this apart very carefully and give it a clean. That's obviously the gasket that's not doing anything. That will be cleaned and put back in. But I think I may even drill a small hole, because that sits like that. I may even drill a small hole here and here. So if any water gets back into it, it will hopefully drain out into the bottom of the door. And I'm gonna put some sealant, gasket sealant around that as well to try and stop some of the water. The whole thing itself has got some wear on the bush area. There's probably a proper name for it, but I assume that's where the electrode brushes and that fit in. So I'm hoping I can get this part, clean it and then put it back up inside the hole without too many issues. I'm gonna use G85, but that's just my preference. That is so rusty and oily in there. If this works, it's probably only gonna be a quick fix. Oh my God, I don't know if you can see the state of that, but that is minging. Absolutely minging. I'm hoping this is the get a club suit issue. You can see the wall in there. This is just like rusty syrup. sure what I'm going to be able to clean this out with but that is just disgusting in there um, I think I might need something a bit stronger than the old GT85 I'm going to go and find a little wire brush to get in there and give that a clean but I'm hoping this is what's causing my glitching probably be better with a replacement motor I suppose if you bought a second hand one you would just have the same issue but this obviously ain't right I'm gonna I'm gonna find something to clean all this up with and get back to you and show you it when I've cleaned it camera's not really picking it up because it's not really bright enough but I've cleaned out in there as best I can compared to what it was I'll give this a really good clean but as you can see it's got lots of damage on it so I am going to need 
to replace the motor at some point probably sooner rather than later I've got some lube cleaning rust eating stuff for electrics so I'm just going to give this a quick spray in here Hopefully, I'll clean that out and then I'm going to give this a spray. But trying to do it with the cameras in my hands is a bit of a pain. So, this is meant to be a cleaner and a lubricant. So, it's, I've cleaned it as best I can, but I must admit, it is bringing the copper parts up a lot cleaner than they were so. I shall probably clean that off again with a bit of brake cleaner so it evaporates it all and then when it comes to putting it back together I'll give it a really good soak in it again just to make sure it's clean like so this is awkward to get clean because it's full of magnets but I don't know I am going to drill a couple of holes in the bottom of this just to see if that'll help with any water that gets in there coming out try that again with a little bit of try and put a bit of a light in there. Don't know if you can see, but it's a damn sight cleaner in there than it was. Hopefully, it will be good enough to get it with the work. I've drilled three holes in the bottom of this. Try and drain any water out. The reason I've drove, the reason I've drilled three holes is because I've done the two either side, and then realised when it's actually sitting up in the door, it sits at that sort of angle. So the two holes would have been a bit high. So I've gone in at the bottom with another hole, so it will drain at its lowest point. I didn't want to drill into the end of this because I want to put grease in there for the bottom end of the magnet part, the motor part, to sit in and I didn't know if it would affect it. I've cleaned off the burrs inside as best I can. So now it's just a case of give this another quick clean to make sure there's absolutely no metal files in there. Give it a good soak in with the terminal rust eater cleaning stuff and put it all back together and see what happens this is the stuff that I have coated everything in it's a multi-purpose spray it's meant to stop rust lubricate penetrates electricals and bits and pieces I don't know who makes it it's just something I picked up so like I say everything's had a soak in it I can't find no multi-purpose grease so I'm going to go for copper grease, copper grease, copper slip, copper grease, whatever they call it, and give that a go. I'm going to fill the bottom of this up where the spindle sits with copper grease, and hopefully, a bit runny this grease, it will help. I don't know if it's the right thing to use or not someone please if they know let me know but I can only just think it's, it's going to lubricate it a bit better than nothing so I'll set that back in there I'm going to grease this up probably would have been better off with normal grease but like I say I can't find none so I'm going to try copper slip don't know where my big grease pot's gone. 
probably lent it to someone that's the last I see of that okay let's go and try and put this back in the car and see what happens this is a pain in the backside job it probably is easier to do it off the car well I pretty much guarantee it's easier to do it off the car but obviously I didn't want to take the window out and all the mechanism I've managed to get the motor back in trying to get the motor back in with that little rubber gasket is an absolute pain if you do this I suggest you put the rubber gasket up first over there's like a, a casing that slides up over the casing first then put in the motor unit the motor unit itself is a nightmare to try and slide up when you locate it because you're doing it all by fill the teeth on the gearbox for the window mechanism and the motor corkscrew splines no they're not splines corkscrew effect thread obviously don't line up so you've got to jiggle it around move it about so it slots up in there once it goes it obviously locates then it's a case of doing up the three bolts sorry the three nuts doing them up to draw the motor in before you test it remember to do these three bolts back up because obviously you don't want the window to move and the mechanism to come out of place so I'm now going to bolt these four bolts back up make sure everything's connected and then reconnect my window switch and test it before I put all the panel back on this is a failure it didn't work it's all a bit odd um, you push the window down and it goes to move you grab hold of the motor and it works fine keep hold of the motor and it work, goes back up but as soon as you let go of that motor it stops working the window's in a locked position now up so what I'm going to do is disconnect that green plug this is the feed to the motor I don't want to take the mechanism out just yet or the motor completely out because then the window won't stay up but now that window's dead but all my other windows still work and I won't be able to put that one down by accident so like I say this is a bit of a failure it didn't work there's obviously a major issue with the motor and the mechanism a few people online have said they've done it and it's worked fine but maybe no matter how much I cleaned it out that moat was too far gone so I'm going to leave this video here I'm obviously going to put everything back together because I need to use the car and I'll do another video on changing the motor and the mechanism and hopefully that will work once I've obviously sourced a new motor so troll the internet now try and find a new one I don't think it's worth putting a second hand one in there because it's just going to be the same issue so I'm going to leave it there keep tuned for more videos and please like comment and subscribe thank you for watching classics on a shoestring